So welcome back. After, so this is the time where we traditionally run the Christos Nikolaou PhD award, just to remind you. So the summer school had been founded 12 years ago um, while we had a very big project, uh, a new project called S Cube. It was a service on the lighthouse project, 25 million. So I got six people funded from this project alone. It was fantastic. You know the people that you know, Mike Papazu group, uh, Carlo Getzi, <coughs> right? And Christoph Nicolau. And Christoph Nicolau um, founded in the tradition. So we met in Crete first and in Palermo. And uh, because Palermo, sorry, Palermo was a mess. <laughs> oh, sorry, Jacopo. <laughs> <laughs> so we decided then to stay at Crete. And now since 10 years, huh? Uh, uh, huh? well, absolutely not. <laughs> and since 10 years we are here at Crete and very, very sadly and it was a total, total shock for us three years ago Christoph Nicola passed away right, within a couple of hours. He just ceased to exist. And uh, then we found uh, one of his uh, PhD students who founded a startup company, a venture capital company and he is now um, funding this Christoph Nicolau Award. It comes with 2,000 euros, right? Uh, I hope you will take it. He clearly needs the text, right? <laughs> um, uh, and Christoph Nicolau was a person, so uh, history, he, 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 he was also with IBM. I never met him, and IBM was at IBM Research, and he was interested always in the mixture of, uh, and of course, Wilfried also was an S group, sorry, I forgot you. Yeah? So, um, he was at IBM, always interested in a mixture of theoretical work and practical work. And at some point in time, he decided to go back to uh, Greece, to Crete, became a professor here. And because of that, we were looking for PhD thesis in this area every year. They are submitted, and, uh, and the supervisor needs to recommend it. And we asked for a third or fourth uh, uh, report. Right? And this year, Need to find the report. Where's the report? So uh, we got a couple of submissions, and Jacopo Zogani from the University of Pisa, the supervisor uh, Antonio Brocchi, he won the award, and I was especially happy because he worked. He was at University of Stuttgart for a half year, right? He's an excellent jogger. He learned how to drink beer, and he got <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so let me read only a few sets of the title of the thesis was Modeling, Analyzing and Reusing Composite Cloud Applications. And I only read a few sentences out of the anonymous report. This PhD th thesis tackles uh, a well-motivated set of research questions that are directly applicable to nowadays problems, which was Christos' attempt. He always wanted to apply uh, research results. These problems are tackled in the, 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 the problem, are these problems are tackled in the PhD thesis of Jacopo Zordani by means of modeling approach and language for composite cloud applications, the theoretical and practical settings for analyzing these applications. The sound line, also the PSD, the sh the thesis shows a sound line of argumentation and an interesting mix of formal and practical aspects. So, and now the tradition also says that for one hour he now must present the result of his thesis in a very nice form, so the expectations are very high. <laughs> and first of all, he gets the certificate, and I always forget how to get him the 2,000 euros, I may not know. Uh -huh. <laughs> 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 Aha, 
developed uh, in a previous solution. So this is the roadmap of the of the presentation, and uh, the roadmap the roadmap will follow the chapters of of the thesis. Which, by the way, if you are interested to browse uh, while I'm presenting, you can access to this tiny URL. I hope this is readable. And um, so. I will start with some background. Uh, as I said, uh, we are considering an existing topology model, and in particular, we will uh, base the we will we have based our work on Tosca. So I will have to provide you some background on on the, on the language. Even I mean, most probably many of you, and surely some of you, do know what Tosca is. And after this, I would show uh, the how we use Tosca to develop uh, techniques. Uh, for uh, syntactically matching uh, and reusing uh, cloud application. Then I will show uh, the uh, first uh, version of uh, our compositional uh, model for the management behavior. Then I will mix the two to show you how to combine this and this to get uh, a matching of application which is also accounting for the behavior of the components of an application. And finally, I will show you how we uh, included failures in our modeling. So, let's start from Tosca, and uh, as you probably know, Tosca is an, an, is an OASIS standard whose goals are to uh, allow the creation of portable uh, cloud applications and to automate their management. This is the meta-modeling, so an application is modeled as a service template whose structure is given by a topology template. Topology template is essentially um, a directed graph whose nodes represent the components of the application and whose arcs uh, uh, are representing the interdependencies and interconnection among such components. Both, relation, uh, both uh, nodes and relationships are typed because types <coughs> uh, describe the structure of each relationship and each component in your application. And finally, uh, in a former version of, of Tosca, um, what you have is plans, so you can develop uh, workflow plans, let's say BPMN or people plans, orchestrating the operations of the, no of the nodes and of the relationships to, to accomplish uh, a management task. So let's say you have a plan for deploying, for deploying uh, your application. To be more concrete, I would show you a toy example. So here you can see the modeling of a REST API, which is implemented in Drop Wizard, and which you can host, uh, which you wish to host on a Docker container, which is offering, uh, let's say, uh, Maven because Drop Wizard requires Maven. And here you have uh, the backend for of this, uh, of this uh, API, which is a NoSQL database, a Mongo database. And you see that each component is uh, showing off the operations that are uh, available for uh, orchestrating its management, the requirements it needs uh, to, to properly work, the capabilities of it offers to satisfy the requirements of other components, and some properties to specify, let's say, the configuration of your, of your component. And as you see, the requirements uh, of a component are connected to the capabilities of another to um, say that this requirement is satisfied by these capabilities of, of this component. And then you can also develop a plan. Here you see that this is a BPM, BPMN-like plan which shows the deployment of this application. And you see that it starts by in concurrently uh, running the Docker containers and then set, installing, configuring, and starting the API on top of the main container. So this is more or less all uh, on Tosca. What uh, I miss is to show you another concept, which is that of boundary de definition, because, because this will be crucial for the reuse techniques that I will, uh, I will show you in a while. So this is the your, this is your application, and you can decide to uh, implement these boundaries to to have a black box, so you don't know what's inside of of, of the application. You just uh, from the outside of these boundaries, you just see the capabilities, properties, uh, in this case, that are no requirements, but maybe requirements, and the operations <coughs> that are uh, available outside. So if I'm giving you this, uh, this topology template, if I'm giving this to a third-party machine uh, engine, 
the engine will see only the, the boundaries. Okay, I will try to show you how we, how we uh, exploited this, this notion to, to develop a uh, reuse based on matching and adaptation. This is again uh, an example to motivate the work. So, this is your application. You have a PHP module and a MySQL database. And you see that these uh, components have some pending requirements. So you would like to find uh, an environment for running them already available in another solution. So you model the environment in an abstract way. So you say, this is the node I need. This has to provide this kind of capabilities, this property, and this uh, operation. And then what you would like to do is to match and adapt existing application to implement this component. This is uh, something that is uh, supported by Tosca itself because as if you look at the primary of Tosca, you see that uh, there is this uh, substitutability notion which says that exist existing Tosca application can be reused to actually, actually implement desired components. The idea is simple, so here you have the abstract component that you wish to, to implement and here you have an existing application of which you can see the boundary definitions. So since these boundaries are matching the boundaries of, of the abstract component, what you can do is that you can use this to implement this. But in the specification of Tosca, there is no formal uh, <coughs> no, no formalization of this. This is just given in, in natural language. So what we did as a first step for, for our work was to define a notion of exact matching. So we formalized notion uh, informally given by the, by the specification and then we realized that this was a bit uh, stringent, I mean you um, adding a comp an existing component that exactly matches another one, of course as, as uh, usual in, in uh, service composition, I mean it is not always the case, you might find something that is similar, maybe something that is offering what you need but even requiring less or offering more and whatever. So our idea was to extend the exact matching in such a way that we can match applications that offer more, so they have more operations, more capabilities, more properties, but they also require less, so less requirements are needed to, to execute such application. And this gives us the notion of plugin plug matching, to which we atta attach the adap adap adaptation methodology, but I, I will not delve into the details because uh, it could be boring in uh, June in, uh, with this sun and so if you wish, you can contact me and I will be happy to, to give you the details for all the presentation. And what we did also was to uh, in, in, ignore other problems. So for instance, ignore naming differences by extending this uh, matching in, into this one. And then also we were trying to look for missing uh, stuff inside the topology. And this is what we call the white, white box matching. But our uh, solution was having uh, some issues and uh, essentially the following. So if you try to implement this component with this one, what you end up doing is that you are reusing the whole thing. So what you end up doing is that you are deploying something, in particular these two services that are unnecessary for implementing your desired component. And in the end, this will result in wasting resources and wasting resources is waste, wasting money in, in the cloud. So, also with the help of uh, the group in Stuttgart, in, during my period abroad, we um, developed uh, a solution which we call Tosca Mart, which is a Tosca-based method for adapting and reusing application topology. The objective here is to reuse only the fragments of an application that are needed to concretely implement what you need. Here is the algorithm in a workflow view. So we start with a desired node when, with a set of uh, existing topologies. We use some kind of operators for, for performing the matching. Then we, in this step, we uh, find all the candidates in this uh, repository that are uh, able to implement the desired node. These candidates are then given to a rate and filter and cut step, let's say, which, in which we uh, 
rate uh, the components, uh, the, we rate the candidate space based on some objective function and we order them uh, to find, let's say, the best one and, and the worst one. Then we cut the, the worst and we perform some adaptation for uh, getting the actual implementation of, of the component. The algorithm, uh, we stress it from a formal perspective and we prove that it always terminates, that it is sound and that its complexity is uh, linear in the size of the repository, so in the amount of available uh, application and in the amount of the features available in each application. We also developed a prototype which is uh, available open source, you can access it, access it here. <coughs> it is uh, released under an MIT license and it is fully compali compatible with the open Tosca ecosystem. So if you take the open source ecosystem for, for Tosca, you can see that Tosca Mark plugs uh, into, in, into the ecosystem. And also we uh, uh, ran some uh, plastic um, experiments and what we have obtained that uh, the time performances that we measured uh, um, theoretically were respected by, by our tests. Okay, now I will switch topic to, to the modeling, to the modeling of uh, management protocols. And again, uh, to try to explain you what we are uh, looking for, I will start from a scenario motivating the need for such modeling. Again, we have a very simple application, a front-end, a back-end, both hosted on a web server, and the front-end is uh, exploiting the back-end to service fun functionalities. What you want to do is to automate or analyze the management of your application, but you have to take into account that these are interdependent one another. Let's say, if you want to start the web server, of course, first you have to and this kind of intra-component dependency, so one operation depending on another operation of the same components, are, uh, you can find them all uh, in, in all components. More, you have that if you wish to connect the front end of your application to the back end, what you, have, what you need is that the back, end, the back end is running, so you can execute this operation only when the operation run uh, of the back end has been executed. And of course, you have plenty of this. What you end up is this kind of spaghetti dependencies which you wish to manage. So, what we did was to develop a modeling which allows you to take into account of this kind of dependencies. And the modeling uh, starts from uh, the idea of modeling the intra-component dependencies uh, with a finite state machine. So, these are the states of this component and these states uh, are connected by transitions saying, okay, setup allows me to, to go from unavailable to stop it and run can be executed only when I'm stopped. So in this way, you define a sort of partial ordering, of ordering among the operations. And what we also added is uh, the modeling of intercomponent dependencies. So this component is, uh, has some dependencies and in particular, it requires this. Uh, it requires a <coughs> and it is capable of satisfying the dependencies of other components through its uh, capability web up, uh, web up time. Uh, sorry, web up runtime. So what we did is we said, okay, when I'm in, in this state, I don't need any requirement. I mean, in the, I'm independent. I'm independent from the rest of the application. The same is for stop it. While I'm while, uh, while the component is uh, working, it needs the server to be operating, otherwise it would uh, crash somehow. And it, also, it is also capable of satisfying the requirements of the components depending on it. Of course, the dependencies are also on the execution of the operation, because if you wish to set up uh, this uh, Apache server, of course you need that the server, when it is running, is, uh, is available. And this uh, I mean, this modeling uh, allows you to, to model the management behavior of each single component. But in order to analyze the modeling, uh, sorry, the management of uh, the whole application, you need to find a way to compose this modeling. 
And this is uh, what uh, this is given by these simple definitions. So you can derive it by composition. And the first notion that you need is uh, the notion of global state, which is essentially a set in which you have the states of each component. So each state, uh, let's say, the initial state is where all components are uninstalled. So this is a global state. This is the initial global state. And then you have that each time you change the state of, uh, of a component, you change the global state. What you have is also a notion of consistency on the global state, which says, OK, this state is uh, telling me how the con in which is the configuration of the component. This component may, may uh, assume some requirement to be satisfied. And the global state is, is consistent if all such requirements are satisfied. And also, if you are in a global <coughs> state, let's say in a consistent global state, you can execute an operation if all the requirements needed to execute it are available, it's, uh, are satisfied in such state. An example maybe is better than, than this uh, plenty of words. So here you see our application. You see that these are the finite state machines. This is the one for front end, this is the one for back end, and this is the one for web server. This is the global, the global state is highlighted by these green circles. So you see that the web server is started and it is uh, providing its uh, capability up, 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 up RTE. Um, the backend is also running and its requirement is assumed and its capability is provided. And frontend is instead started, started. So here you see that it is only requirement, requiring its server requirement, so the only one I like it in green is this one. Now suppose that you wish to execute this operation. Of course, the global state is consistent because you see that there is no requirement with, the, let's say, the green uh, ballet on it connected to a capability which is not provided. Now we want to uh, execute this operation. You see that the ser server requirement is already satisfied because you have it here. But also backend can be satisfied because the, the capability it is connected to is provided. So what you can do is that you can execute the operation and you can update the global state. This is essentially uh, the, the idea uh, behind our work. And with this idea, what you can do is that you can define when the management, <coughs> when a plan uh, describing the management of your application is valid. You can do so essentially by checking whether all the operations that, that you are executing are uh, fireable in a sense, and also that all the global state that you traverse while executing such operations are uh, consistent. You can also determine the effects of a plan because, I mean, you can observe the evolution of the global state from the start to the end of the, of the plan. So you can see how the global state changes from the beginning to the end and also throughout the plan. And we also have some notion of determinism. I mean, uh, a plan uh, can be concurrent. And of course, you have diff since the semantics is given by interleaving, you can have different uh, sequencing of the plan. And you can end up in different uh, global states. So to obtain determinism, what you wish is that uh, they, reach, they all reach the same global state. Of course, determinism is important because while you are managing your application, you don't want that your plan gives you uh, a non-deterministic effect. I mean, you are deploying in your application and the application is, is instead uh, not deployed. You wish that the application is reaching what, uh, always the same, uh, the same goal. There is also, given this notion, there is also a notion of uh, planning. So if you, are, if you have a starting global state and a target one, you can determine the plan uh, allowing you to, to reach such, uh, such goal. This is easily done by, let's say, visiting the, uh, this can be done by visiting the graph of all possible global states. You start from the one which is yours, and you can find a path to the, to the desired one. We developed uh, an, uh, an implementation which we call Barrel, and this is uh, based on Tosca. It takes it as input the Tosca application, and it allows you to model the uh, management behavior of each component in the application and to analyze uh, to analyze the management. 
We also uh, validated our uh, theory with a concrete case study based on a real application, a simple one but real, which is uh, made by three components. The application is this one. It's a, an application to share thoughts. It's not that uh, impressive as an application, but it was uh, presenting all the, all, it was satisfying all, all our needs. We use this application to validate it and test uh, existing deployment plans. So we we check that valid plants were effectively uh, deploying the application, while non-valid plants were resulting in uh, exception while uh, being executed. So they were causing issues. And we also uh, experimented our planning uh, algorithm uh, because uh, starting from an existing a running instance of the application, we plan how to undeploy it, we land the undeployment plan that we, dis we discovered, and in the end, the undeployment was successful. Now I've shown you the matching, I've shown you the modeling of the behavior, and uh, I would like to show you how we merge these two notions to obtain a behavior over matching of application. The idea was, quite simple. Uh, we have the notion of syntactic matching. We would like to reach the notion of behavior aware matching. What we need is some, in some way to analyze our uh, management. And in say, uh, this can be easily uh, done by, by matter of uh, behavior simulation. And indeed, we developed the notion of simulation for management protocols. And then we used our existing matching to obtain the Behavior match. <coughs> I would not dive into the details of this, but I would just show you the notion of simulation for management protocols, which is the following. So, essentially, we developed two notions of simulation. The, the first one was uh, the mirroring of the classical notion by San Giorgi. So, you have uh, you want to check whether uh, you have one-to-one -one correspondence between the executor of operation. So. You have a management protocol and prime, and this management protocol is simulating this one. If you can essentially, at any time, this management protocol is uh, the desired management protocol is, is uh, making a step. The other, the available one, can uh, make the same step. And of course, since you have these notions of requirements and capabilities, you have that each state you traverse has to require less and offer more in the available management protocol with respect to the desired one. Then we say, okay, but one-to-one -one operation matching might, might not be enough. We want to have one-to-many, so one operation uh, in the desired management protocol could be implemented by a sequence of uh, uh, available operations. And this is why we developed the notion of F simulation. And essentially this F is a function for mapping the desired operation to a sequence of existing operations. And indeed, the difference here is that essentially, instead of simulation, simulating each transition by each transition, you have that each transition in the available, uh, each available transition can be simulated by the sequence of available transitions. But of course, we would need a, a way to compute this function f because, uh, in principle, this is not easy. And what we did is we developed a conductive algorithm which allows you to find all function f, such that a uh, management protocol m prime is simulating m. And the idea is quite easy. We start from the assumption that uh, each sequence of operation in the available uh, protocol is simulating the desired one. And then we start refining this function by removing all such mappings that are uh, not simulating, not really simulating. The iterative refinement step stop when we reach a post-fix point, so when the refinement cannot be applied anymore. And uh, the set of function that we obtain is uh, a set of function f that allows m prime to f simulate m. Of course, this set can be empty, and if this is the case, this means that there is no f simulation among the two protocols. What we did is uh, to prove that the algorithm uh, is uh, terminating sound and complete. Uh, as this was a conductive algorithm, we had to uh, exploit some conductive techniques for, for proving all, all this stuff. But uh, I mean, it is very boring, so I will, uh, I will skip it. 
and I will jump to the last part of my talk, which is how to take into account failures in this uh, in our model. Okay, again, this is uh, an application. It is perfectly working. You have that all uh, let's say all components are in their final state. They are all running. All they are all up and running. But let's say now some decides to stop this, uh, this backend. This is, uh, of course, uh, admitted because its requirement is satisfied. So what you can do is that you can stop it. But in the end, what you, end, what you get is that this requirement, this, uh, this uh, component is now assuming this backend requirement. Sorry. But the backend requirement is no more satisfied. So by performing some kind of operation, by performing some kind of management of application, of my application, what I did is that I caused a failure in the, in, the, in, the, in the application. Of course, this is what I can do, I mean, what human can do, but there is also the, the possibility that the, the application is actually behaving differently from what you are expecting. So I'm expecting my component to be here, but I, I don't know, I have a non-deterministic bug in my, in my application. The bug occurred and my application and my uh, server crashed. So what I need is uh, to find a way to manage, the, uh, to understand the effects and to manage uh, misbehaving components. And finally, when your application is in this situation, what you would like, sorry, what you would like to do is to find a way to automatically recover it. Otherwise, uh, it will stay in this uh, crashed uh, state. So our approach was to extend management protocol into fault-aware management protocol to show how a node uh, is uh, treated by each component. So what happens to a node? <coughs> and to develop mm, techniques for analyzing and automating, automating the management of application in presence of fault. Then we have, the, uh, we have a simple extension of this which allows you to model the unexpected behavior of a component, so a component which is uh, behaving differently than expected, and this can be naturally modeled in, uh, in, our, in our modeling. And finally, we have a technique for planning the uh, art recovery of, of applications. So step by step, this is our modeling, and the mo the, to model our node uh, reacts to a failure. I mean, I said the failure is a requirement which is not assumed but no more satisfied. We add simply a new transition relation, which says, okay, if this is the requirements that are failing the components will go in this state. And that's it. So in this case, my component is saying that whenever a failure occurs in these uh, two states, the component goes back to its, initial, to its initial state. This can be, for instance, the behavior of a live, uh, uh, live execution <coughs> of an operating system. If, uh, if you remove the CD, the, comp the operating system goes back to, to, to its, initial, uh, its initial configuration. Of course, uh, this is a very simple protocol, but you have, you might have very complex protocol. And of course, maybe the designer doesn't want to model each possible uh, behavior of each possible uh, failure. Maybe also because he doesn't know what happens if this requirement, for instance, in this case, is uh, being um, faulted. So you have, you can default handle your uh, your failures to a state in which we say, okay, since we, you, you didn't tell us what is uh, happening to your component uh, when, it, when, it, when it is affected by a failure, we assume the worst uh, case scenario. So in this, in this case scenario, in the worst case scenario, your component is uh, stuck in a sync state and it is not capable of interacting anymore with the rest of the application. So this means that here you see there is no requirement and no capabilities uh, associated to the state, so this means that it, it stops uh, interacting with the rest of the application, and there is no outgoing uh, transition allowing you to go back uh, to the state where it was uh, interacting with the rest of, of the application. With this simple uh, extension of our uh, modeling, what you can do is that, okay, 
you see now that the old protocols are equipped with the uh, with the fault handling transition. Here I have a failure, and in particular, I have the failure of this requirement. The failure of this requirement is handled by this transition. I don't know whether it is readable. So this means that this is the transition I will uh, fire, and my component goes back to the starter state. This models the fact that if you stop the backend and if the front end is connected to the backend, what it, what happens is the backend goes uh, back to the, to the state where it was running, but not connected to to the backend. Of course, all previously uh, existing notions for validity effects and planning are uh, maintained by this. This is a natural extension, so you just need to include in this also the fault ending transition and everything works as uh, before. And this is why we are happy. So, uh, the last thing about modeling is this one. So, again, you might have a component that is behaving differently from what you expect. You model wrongly your component, you have a bug, or whatever, in reality, the state of the component is different from the one that you monitored with, the, with our modeling, or, or the one you expected with our modeling. <coughs> what we did is, we allow you to uh, inject a failure in your, uh, in your component, and we say, okay, you have this operation, this, uh, mm, I don't remember <coughs> the English word for this, but this flash operation, with the crash operation, which allows you to uh, essentially say, okay, I was installed, I invoke this operation because my component is not really installed. I don't know in which state it is, so I will go again to the uh, sync state where uh, I'm stuck. I don't know what is happening. Again, here, let's say you have uh, that the Apache server crashes, you don't know why. You can inject the operation, you can inject the failure, you get that the component goes back to, goes to this uh, sync state, and you can handle the failure. So you end up in this state. Fantastic. You have managed to analyze the effects of a misbehaving component. But unfortunately, these components are stuck. I mean, you don't know what to do. I mean, these components cannot be recovered according to our modeling. So, to make Homer, Homer happy again, we would like to find a way to um, recover this application. And the question is whether recovery plans can be generated automatically. We started thinking to this, and uh, in the end, we end up with this. I mean, this is our idea. Mm. This is what happens. I mean, what happened? What do you do when this screen, if you are a Windows user, is appearing on your PC? So it's it's Mac. <laughs> this is long possibility. <laughs> or if you cannot switch to Mac, what you do is you turn off your PC and you turn it on again and you hope that it will work. And this is what we do. I mean, yeah. this is the machine is stuck. It is not responding. You forcibly restart it. If a node is stuck, it is not responding uh, to anybody. You want to forcibly restart. Of course, we don't have the power button on the nodes because these are not PCs. What you can do, however, is that you know that your, your, your component is host on some other node, so you can restart this one. Because, I, I mean, if you, are a, uh, if you have a web service installed on a web server, if the web service crashed and you, don't, you, you are not able to, to manage this, what you can do is you can start restart the server, which is actually if you have worked with the web services, something that is used to do, or this is also done in Docker, for instance. If you have Docker containers, the, the application is not responding, you kill the Docker container and you start, you start it again. So, again, we have a formal modeling for all of these, which uh, works by uh, artificially extending the modeling in a transparent way for the developer, but again, I mean, this would be boring, I guess, for, to show on the slides. Of course, you can access the thesis, you can access the, the papers on this, and you can, uh, get the details, or you can contact me and I will be happy to, to share it with you. We extended our uh, implementation with this, uh, with this new 
stuff I mean, with these new failures, and we also rebranded it because uh, the, yeah, the GUI, at least with respect to the previous version, is a bit more fancy. And again, it takes task application, it allows you to model the fault aware behavior of the components forming an application. And here you have all uh, the analysis. So you can enable art recovery, so this idea of uh, Windows uh, uh, switching on and off. And then you have this one, which allows, the simulator, which allows you to simulate the execution of a plan and checks the, it, and it allows you to check the effects of a plan. And here it is not readable, but you have a planner, so you can set the starting state, you can set the target state, and the uh, application automatically computes the sequence of operation allowing you to reach it. We took again our case study. <coughs> Injected, uh, well, I mean, we validated uh, the deployment plans, but also we injected uh, a failure. I mean, we say, okay, how can we simulate the fact that the API is not behaving as we expected? Essentially, we killed the process. So uh, this was not in the model, of course, the, key, the manual kill of, of, of the process. And if you and when we tried to connect to the GUI, the GUI was uh, displaying uh, I mean, the application, but if you inspect the call, you see that the, uh, the API was not reachable. So we managed to, to model this, this situation. And with planning and with other recovery, we also managed to uh, recover our, uh, our instance of the application. That's it. This is uh, what I've shown you so far. This is the list of publication. This is for surely unreadable, uh, associated with the chapter of the thesis. Uh, but uh, if you're interested in it, again, you can contact me and I will be happy to, to, share, uh, to share everything with you. To conclude, these were the research objectives on the thesis, and for each of them we presented uh, the, uh, a set of, of, of contributions. In particular, for the modeling, we presented management protocols, which are modular, composition, and which allow you to model the behavior of the components forming an application by, take, by taking into account failures. Then we showed you uh, techniques for analyzing and automating the management of application from the checking the validity of existing plans to uh, planning and also to recovering uh, failed instances of applications. And finally, techniques for matching and adapting <coughs> existing fragments of uh, applications by taking into account both structure and behavior. As I presented you, this is more or less everything is based on Tosca, but in reality, this, while this part is based, of course, on the <coughs> syntax of Tosca, and so it is bound to Tosca, this part is more abstract, so it is independent, in a, in a, in a sense, from the employed topology model. You can take, I don't know, Gentle or CloudML or enterprise topology graphs or whatever, I mean, whatever topology model and you can use it because you, what you just need is operations, capabilities and requirements. So uh, that, that's it. For assessing the result of the thesis, we try to, be, to take into account both practical and theoretical aspects. So for both we provide uh, prototype implementation and for the part of the modeling, what we did is uh, to validate through case studies while for the use, we formally assess uh, the proposed algorithm and we run some plastic experiments. And to uh, mention very briefly related work, uh, the modeling in, is the first approach which allows you to model and analyze the faults in a, compo in a composite application to deal with misbehaving components and to uh, find uh, plans for recovering your, uh, your application. While for the reuse, this is mainly based on Tosca. Tosca allows you to model both functional and non-functional uh, aspects of, of your application. And so, uh, this is our reuse is considering both. And also, uh, I mean, of course, we are the first proposing the modeling, so we are also the first uh, exploiting the simulation of such modeling for uh, for checking whether 
the expected behavior is the one uh, that we are, that the reused behavior is, is the one that we, that we expect. For future work, uh, I mean, in both lines there are uh, things to do. One is uh, through concurrency, so I mean, we have uh, that uh, the semantics of our um, model is interleaving based, so you, check, you, you do a step, then everything synchronizes and you do another step, but what happens is that the assumption here is that the um, execution of an operation is atomic. I mean, you, you, there is no time while uh, you are executing this operation. While, of course, you might start the execution of the, you might start installing your server, and in the meanwhile, if the, the operating system might crash. So, of course, the installation is not completing, and the, there is a fault also in the server. So taking into account the faults uh, generated during transition is, is something to do. We, are, we have already a solution for this and this is submitted to a conference. Then also, of course, uh, topologies are assumed to be static here. I mean, uh, the structure of the application is that one, but if you consider more dynamic scenario like microservice based applications or uh, fog computing scenario, you have that nodes uh, are entering and exiting from the topology uh, dynamically. So something to do is to take into account the fact that a node is entering in the topology and it might detach uh, while, being, uh, while the application is mined. And of course, what, what we did is uh, we didn't care so far about the cost of, the, of executing a plan, the cost of residing in a state, and as well as uh, we didn't account for the quality of service that your uh, plan or the component is uh, offering you during uh, its execution or, or the only its state. Of course, this is uh, uh, something that we would like to do, and essentially what we would like to do is to extend the modeling to take into account cost and QS. And since uh, management protocols started from Tosca, what we are also trying to do is to impact on, on the standard, and we are trying to push our uh, modeling to be included in, uh, in the instance modeling. There is a Nadoc group in, in Tosca in, in which we are participating, which is trying to deal with uh, such things. And to be fast, uh, on the reuse, of course, I've shown you some uh, technique for the using fragments of topology, but the behavior was taking into account only the whole application. What we would like to do is to extend, let's say, Tosca map to take into account also the behavior and so on, and in such a way that all the matching that we have are integrated in a single one, which uh, one can use to reuse the existing application. There is also this one, which is very important. We start from the assumption in Tosca that if two components have the same boundaries, then one can be used to implement the other. But of course, uh, this is uh, challenging and an assessment of this assumption would be needed. I mean, uh, Tosca is growing and they are starting to get out uh, some first solutions for uh, some industrial solution for it. So once they are available, it would be nice to check whether the existing application can really be reused uh, in this way. And of course, here we are not taking into account cost and QS and as we are planning to extend the modeling, this, it would be nice also to take this into account, into the reuse. And that's it. I hope to, to not have bored you too much, let's say. And uh, thank you again for listening. And if you wish, you can contact me and you can find me on the net. Thank you. <coughs>
Klar, if you go through the reception, you go to the pool, you talk to the right, there's a slide, yeah, you don't, don't use the slide, right? You pass the slide and then you So the thing is very interesting. Das kommt nicht in dem Kontext.